the old salt miner here. And I bought this uh, RPM sensor kit <clears throat> off of eBay. Um, the box was a separate thing I bought. Um, this is a different magnet than what came with it. I like this magnet better. It's stronger and it has a hole in it so I can fasten it to things. And a little sheet of aluminum. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, put this all together and see if we can't make an RPM sensor for the mini mill. This is the display for the RPM sensor. And uh, there's two plugs here. One for power and one for the uh, sensor. This part. Um, this senses the magnet as it goes by. And um, we're going to have to mark this um, and cut a hole in it so that this fits in there. Now it has these little spring clamps here. So I'll have to make the hole um, with that in mind. I'm going to use the Dremel on it and uh, mark it and cut it. So what I did was I took this piece of cardboard and made a cutout where this fits down in there. I just kind of traced around it and cut it out. And now I can set this on here and mark it with this silver pin. Um, I like using the silver pin. It, it works pretty good on... Uh, on a lot of things, a metallic marker, and uh, works really good. Okay, I kind of saved you a little bit of showing you uh, taking the Dremel and cut it, cutting this out. Um, see a little bit of the silver there. Um, I had to fiddle with it quite a little bit to get these holes just right, but now this fits in there really nicely. I can just push this in and it snaps in and there it is and then it fits on this box I'll have to look up the box um, look up on eBay and tell you what size it was but these kits um, there it is it's all snapped together these kits um, or a little different. A friend of mine got one and his is a little different than this one. Alright, so now next I need to figure out how I'm going to mount the box on and uh, how I'm going to power it. Okay, I've been doing a little experimenting and I dug through my uh, jug of wall warts and I found this one and this is an AC to AC 6 volt adapter. So it goes from 120 volts AC to 6 volts AC. Now interesting enough when you look at the back of this see if I can zoom in on that right here by my thumb it says it'll run off of DC 8 to 24 volts or AC 6 to 8 18 volts so it takes just about anything to run it and so I'm going to plug this in and uh, we'll get her up and running here in a second okay there you see powers on 6 volts AC take my little magnet here and we'll show that it works maybe Maybe not. Hmm. There we go. Ha, huh, that's odd. It's directional. It works on this side, but not on that side. So I can't. <laughs> I can't drill a hole, tap it, and screw this on because you see this is indented a little bit. We uh, get on that. 
indented a little bit to put a screw head down in because I have to have it upside down like this for it to work. So there it is. Well, there it works. Turn it over. Hmm, it don't work. Isn't that interesting? Wonder which field it has to have. There are no instructions with this, by the way. Um, it just kind of uh, learn by doing, I guess. Here we go. All right, so now I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to drill a hole through this, mount this through there, drill a couple holes in the top of this, and mount it to the uh, mill. And then I'll probably mount the box uh, that I cut the hole in earlier um, to the side of the box of the mill. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, here's the readout. And I'm thinking... Um, I'm thinking about mounting it just like that. I think that ought to work. And then I'm going to take this guard thing off. Um, I've never used the guard. I probably should, but I don't. And um, that aluminum plate will fit there just nicely with a couple holes in it. All right. You can see I kind of got ahead of myself again. Didn't film marking this. But what I did was I put this down and I marked it with the pen. And I got close to being round. I've also already took this block that was on the front of the mill and used those holes to transfer um, and punched. So we're ready to drill and I'm ready to grind off the edges and uh, make it look kind of pretty before I mount the sensor right here. Okay, so here we are at the drill press, ready to drill her away. So we got this right. Well, I did it again. I started uh, melting this and forgot to set the camera up and start filming. Sorry about that, but this is the support for the RPM sensor of the tachometer. 
And uh, I think I'm going to mill a slot in here because I figured, well, a slot's going to work out better. Um, that way I can adjust it a little better, up or down, whatever it needs to be. So, here we go. Okay, that's done. Alright, so when uh, thinking about uh, how am I going to attach the uh, box um, for the readout um, of the uh, tachometer, um, I thought, well, I want to be able to remove it at some point. And so I settled on... Um, drilling and tapping right about here and here two screws and I think I'll use a number 632 screw um, kind of a light fixture type screw um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll drill an oversized hole in the bottom I've already kind of marked it where I'm going to drill it and uh, so the screw will fit through that then I'll set it up here and uh, mark it and then I will drill into that and tap it. This is relatively thick plastic and uh, should be able to tap it and it should be okay. I've already drilled uh, one hole for to be tapped and uh, now I'll drill a second hole. Okay, so if you're wondering, uh, boy, that's kind of dangerous. Join into an electrical box. Might hit a component or something. Now I've already looked in there, and there's uh, really nothing right here. Now I'll tap it.
And so the holes are tapped. Never hurts to test with a screw. And I think that'll work quite well as long as I don't over tighten the screws when I put the box in. This, of course, is a way longer screw than I will use, but it was handy. So here we have it screwed down. Worked out just fine. Uh, ended up using uh, switch plate cover screws. And uh, here's the uh, tachometer display. And it snaps right in there. And uh, that's how she'll look. Alright, so now I need to uh, stick the magnet in. It's going to go right here. And uh, I've run it with the uh, just the magnet stuck to that <clears throat> and it uh, it'll stay stuck but I'm not gonna take any chances and I'm going to uh, epoxy that and but before I do that I got to spray a little brake clean on there and get that nice and clean That's pretty neat. It holds itself on. We're going to drill through the back <clears throat> of the uh, case now where the wires, um, like this wire, will come through and plug into the circuit board on the tachometer. Whoa, that was like butter. Okay, I've got the uh, plugs in the uh, readout. Uh, it fits in there nicely. There we go. Alright, as all I also have the sensor mess, uh, mounted. The magnet that I stuck on before is there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take that cord and uh, um, I got some stick on mount things. I'm going to stick that on. I'm going to leave this um, sensor cord full length and uh, wrap it up and put it in behind there, tied up with a cable tie. Of course, I got it crooked. Okay, I got these uh, wires staked down. Now, I think I'm getting ready to test it. Okay, we got the tachometer going. And I have this uh, handheld tack also. I don't know if I can be able to get this in frame, but we'll give her a try. 236 is what it's reading. And the handheld is reading 235.7.
That's not bad. Let's turn her up. Twelve twenty one. Twelve twenty two on the handheld. Pretty good. Twenty six twenty nine. See, I'm getting double. I'm getting 52. So I'm thinking it's mis the handheld's misreading. You know, I could have uh, gotten this box and tied this in directly. I know some people have done that. And I just, I had to put these red boxes on, on both of on my mail. Uh, I bought this as a salvage mail. I took a big chance and I, I uh, paid for it. I think I paid 400 bucks for it. <clears throat> Examined the pictures really, really, really good. Talked to the guy that had it. Um, he assured me that nothing else was bent up on it, and I was lucky nothing else was bent up on it. But these boxes, this one and the one in the back, the power box, were smashed. And so I had to completely take it apart and solder it back together. And I just don't want to mess with getting in there and uh, tying that directly in. It would, it would probably be pretty simple to do, but I'm not going to mess with it. Instead, I've hooked up a wall wart. Um, like I originally had it hooked up when I tested it. And I'm happy with that. Um, down the road I may change things and do something different and take it off of here. And uh, it won't be a problem. I can easily do that. Alright. That's the end of this project. I think this is going to be really useful. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe.